Cool. Hey guys, I'm back. Um, trying to make some more videos on a more consistent basis. Kind of want to make a lot this weekend because I um, haven't made any in a while. And um, I got a list of like YouTube video topics I want to talk about. Uh, but in this time, I'm going to focus on a um, another uh, setup video. I do want to cover some videos that are more about psychology or more about like the profession of day trading and progressing as a day trader and, and kind of like the more, you know, um, you know, abstract psychological aspects of day trading rather than just chart setups, chart setups, chart setups and all that stuff. Um, but this is a chart setup video. Uh, today we're going to be focused on high date clearouts and um, kind of how to judge uh, what an ideal scenario is uh, in terms of when to enter, um, how much to enter. And also, what happens after you enter? What what should the price action and the volume look like um, to confirm that uh, the stock is fading? It's extremely likely to keep fading, and that you should keep holding on to your position or eating even adding as it as it goes down. That type of thing. So uh, I have a bunch. I mean, we've been seeing so many of these in March, and really they happen all the time. Um, but a ton of them in March. Uh, which is great because that means there's a bunch of different contexts you get to look at. You can see which uh, situations work really well, which situations don't. Um, I kind of have a list here off screen of really crazy ideal situations. Um, and I'm not just talking about hindsight bias, like, yeah, this faded really hard, but like things that happen um, in the moment that let you know like, hey, this, this, is, uh, this is a great short and I should get in. Um, and kind of what confirms uh, what price action confirms that it's a great short. And then I also have some uh, situations this month where uh, these clearouts were complete uh, short traps, right? Uh, because the thing about manipulators uh, is they like to vary um, their manipulations, right? Uh, they like to uh, vary their tricks. And a lot of times uh, the price action and volume lets you know uh, whether a, a big massive dump is actually really going to happen or uh, if there's going to be more games. Um, I do want to mention that uh, a lot of what I learned about manipulation does come from Trade the Matrix and his blog. Um, he just released a brand new part four um, uh, small cap rig article. Highly recommend reading it. I know it's, it's, it's insanely long. Um, a good amount of what I'm talking about, he actually covers in here. Uh, and actually, crazy enough, the video I made yesterday, he talks about, which I talked about, the bid prop strat. Um, he actually mentions, he actually brings it up about, uh, he talks about symmetry um, and how manipulators use symmetry to fake people out uh, and the psychology behind it and why it works. Um, highly recommend just reading all of his articles, but especially his, um, his four rigged small cap articles. And hopefully I could bring some additional perspective, the way I kind of look at things. Um, I also use some indicators in certain contexts that he doesn't use. Um, I view taking ads and taking profits slightly different. Um, I view fading action slightly different. Uh, not totally different, but uh, just like little differences that I think uh, help build, uh, can help you build a, a more complete picture of things and help you develop your own way of, of looking at things. Uh, so yeah, uh, high day clear out. So what is this strat. Uh, the strat's real simple. Um, at least the idea behind it's really simple, is that there's a stock that has a high, right? So in this case, if you're at market open, uh, the high is 2.5, um, 2.57, right? So it's like, okay, and it's trending up towards it. Okay, cool. Here's the high. Um, and then you have instant weakness at market open, right? So you have a lot of shorts who love shorting for a couple of minutes. Um, they're loading up. Uh, and usually I almost never short first uh, five minutes uh, of market open, except in very, very specific situations that often depend on action that is happening in the pre-market. Um, market open shorts are super heavily dependent on how you're reading the manipulation in the pre-market and what is happening in the pre-market. Um, uh, but in this case, it's actually it's, it's actually quite bullish, right? You had this big push, bounce, again, 1 minute 200 manipulation, super manipulated MA, talked about it in the bid prop. You're going to see it today, um, here and in many other charts. 
And then it just starts grinding up, grinding up, more strength grinding up, pulls back, keeps grinding up. I'm like, okay, like, <laughs> there's nothing that directly tells me. Um, and I wouldn't count this as a bit prop strat, by the way, of higher lows and higher highs. Um, this is much more of just like volume picking up in the pre-market compared to this like slow period back here, maybe a lot of retails getting in. This was an NFT stock, um, very important to know sector. Um, know the bullish sectors, know what, what sectors are bringing in lots of volume. Um, and also always be wary of when the market's been slow. So when this happened this week, um, the low float market has just been in a slow, very slow period. And a lot of times it's a sector hype stock that wakes it up. You know, you get these insane short traps and you get these insane like 300, 400, 500% runners. Um, and a lot of it comes from, uh, uh, not all the time, but it could definitely come from sector hype and lots of retail participation and then lots of manipulation because of that retail participation. But this is more of just like pushing on strength with new volume. I'm just kind of looking to see what happens on market open, not interested in shorting um, first couple minutes at all. Like there's nothing in here. There's nothing crazy, super bearish in here that lets me think, yeah, I can take a short at 9.30, 9.31. Um, so unsurprisingly, it starts trading 3 million shares and then screen. <laughs> I think it's when you trade this much volume this fast, um, especially if there's weakness, it's a great time for a manipulator to come in and accumulate a lot of stock really fast. And something trade the matrix talks about is sometimes like, um, a manipulator might just be going for early morning liquidity squeezes and they just pour the pull the rug into shorts. And sometimes they're setting up a full day manip. And the truth is you don't really know. You don't really know if this is just gonna be one squeeze past high day and it's gonna crack and fall. Um, or if it's, if, it's, if it's gonna crack, set a trap, set a trap and then keep squeezing. Um, but I'll show you what I'm thinking of this. So uh, market open, pretty weak, squeezes, squeezes. And not only does it break high day, it breaks it on 6.7 million <laughs> volume. And these are one minute charts, right? And to think about stocks that keep pushing really, really, really hard is actually the higher the volume, once you start breaking like five, six, seven million shares, um, especially uh, at this price range, like uh, in the morning, um, those are actually really not sustainable. You kind of need a lot of stocks that kind of like push, pull back a little bit, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing with these like all day manips. A, the, the market sector has to be pretty strong. Like the, the low float sector has to be kind of in a period of strength that it that just increases the chance of that happening. But also it tends to be like constant, like 1 million, 2 million candles, like 1 million, 2 million, 1 million, 2 million, 1 million, 2 million. Like, like and it kind of like, it decreases on the pullbacks to set the trap and then it goes back to 1 million, 2 million on the pushes. Um, sometimes up towards three, but once you start getting like four million, especially five million, six million, seven million share uh, candles, especially past key um, resistance levels, it's often not sustainable. Um, they often die pretty fast. So uh, I actually use this big of a candle um, as kind of like an additional confirmation signal. I'm like, ooh, that's a uh, it, they're gonna have a hard time keep pushing this, especially if it cracks, right? That's a lot of people bagged and that's a lot of people getting cleared out really, really fast. Um, so yeah, pulls back. Uh, Trading Matrix talks about a concept called micro shelves, which is when it consolidates kind of near high day. You really don't like seeing consolidation down here. You wanna see consolidation near the high day. But in this case, it doesn't really consolidate that long. It kind of stays here for four minutes and then just insane crack through this support through the one minute nine, through the one minute 20. And because the volume was so big and we cleared out high a day, this triggers all this, the stop losses from shorts, gets a bunch of longs to chase. Um, you get that clean, clean, huge break through all the support. Um, again, like we talked about in the bid prop, you, you don't wanna see a bounce. Um, when the best patterns give no bounces, look at this, it closes, gives no cracks, does, doesn't, does never come, it never comes back above 2.35 ever again. And then it just cracks, small bounce, cracks. Now this, you do get bounces down here after you hit, have a decent amount of selling off, but you're never reclaiming. Also look at one minute 200 support, it starts becoming resistance right here, right? Very common for one minute 200 to become resistance on fades, especially when the volume starts getting this low. You love to see the one minute 200 get rejected. Um, 
after a huge sell-off and the volume disappearing. Like it is, this is the classic like rollover further crack, right? Um, but a good thing to know, and Trading Matrix kind of brings this up in his article, um, and I mentioned it in my last video, kind of the more volume that's traded in the morning and the more volume that's on the fade, especially if you're still getting like 300, 400, 500K candles, um, you'll see a lot of these like little clear outs, backside clear outs where they're just like, they're trapping shorts in this range. There's a very, there's a very clean uh, high structure right here. And they're just coming to clear it out and they bring it back and then they clear this high out one more time and then they then they pull the rug and then it's done, right? Um, but yeah, this is an example of an early morning uh, high day clear out where um, this high volume candle is kind of unsustainable. Now this doesn't happen that often. Um, an example, another example of kind of this happening is um, AIKI from January 6th. Uh, got the big push, like you just got this like very trappy high volume early morning action, right? Two million share weakness, like I, because this, this pattern isn't bearish at all, I, I don't trust this at all, pushes above, cracks back below in a classic trap early in the morning, um, especially when something doesn't clear out high a day. If something just like is doing this like early morning, first trap, push, come back below VWAP, very super, super, super common trap. Um, especially when, like I said, when there's no big clear out or big dump candle, this is kind of like, again, like you don't like to see dump candles that are like lower volume than the candles that pushed up to begin with. And that's just because it's a very natural sell-off and it's a very natural, it kind of shows you that if somebody's accumulating a lot of shares and if somebody is manipulating this, um, they're just selling off enough of their stock to trap people below key levels without completely dumping a massive amount of their shares. Like if this red candle cracked all the way below like 1.3 and this was the biggest red candle of the day, then yeah, okay, I'm, I'm gonna think that there's a possible unload, especially if there's a very weak bounce and it, is, it doesn't make any new highs after um, after this close and it just kind of struggles and the volume disappears and it keeps fading. Um, then yeah, okay, like possible backside is in. But for these like initial, just like early morning, high volume stock, red dump candles, um, it's super common to bring it above VWAP, decrease the volume to make people think it's weak. And then of course, what is death is that it breaks the support by a few cents. And then you get two green, low volume green candles above a key resistance level. Like I covered this in the bid prop strat. This is such a long signal, dude. This is in the early morning where tons of shorts are loading in. Um, this is just a sign that like the, the, the guy isn't unloading. The seller isn't in control. He's purposely just trapping people. He's soaking the bids. He, he's cracking this by a few cents to get a few more shorts to chase. He's bringing it back up. Um, and it's just extremely likely that he's going for a squeeze, especially since he set up this, look at this lower high structure, this high, this high, this high. I talked about this, Trade, trade, uh, trade the Matrix talks about this. Um, this. This lower high structure is a classic short trap, right? Because people love to set their shorts at this level, at this level, at this level, you got these progressive um, stop losses from shorts and it just creates a ton of liquidity for a big squeeze. So. You get the two green candles back above the UAP, instant pull back above it, and then this is just, um, like if you're fast enough, you could go along here and, and, and prepare for the squeeze. But as you see, we get the same thing. Huge six million volume candle. And then we essentially get like a little micro shelf, right? A little bit of consolidation, some wicks, some heavy selling, heavy selling, heavy selling. Decent size crack, bounces off the one minute nine. I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe it's a low volume trap that's ready to push, but when volume's that big, man, it's, it, it is hard to keep pushing. It is hard to keep pushing once you start trading six, seven million volume candles. Um, and then it comes and then you just get your big, big, big dump. You get a tiny little bounce. I, I would like to see this just keep fading, but I know Trading Matrix likes to say he, he likes to risk halfway up the dump candle. Not bad idea, not bad idea at all. It's pretty tight risk, that's like seven cents. And then, um, as you see, it kind of just like clears VWAP one time to, to get people who are setting like super tight risk. But then the volume just disappears. It comes back down, gives a weak bounce, comes back down. Volume keeps disappearing, and then it's just in fade mode. Um, 
So maybe let's pick an example of a height eight clear out uh, that is less ideal. DLPN, yeah, so classic example of just all day manipulation. Um, I was gonna cover another video about this of, of, of when you essentially need to change your mindset of, of, okay, this guy's just going for a high day, he's gonna pull the rug, it's gonna fade, and oh, this guy is just manipulating this all day, right? Um, because usually you just have to assume like, okay, maybe he's just, he's going for a key level, he's gonna pull the rug and it's gonna fade, right? Like, because that's usually what happens. But then every once in a while, um, but increasingly lately, is you get these insane all day manipulations by these, these, these guys with these really aggressive algos going at the very key levels. Um, uh, and uh, you have to have the ability to kind of change your mindset in, in the middle of the day, after enough traps have been set and after you get enough validation, you need to be like, oh, like every short is now long and every long is now short. <laughs> like, that, that is that is uh, kind of kind of the mindset you need to you need to change to. Um, uh, but it's kind of a done through video. Trade talks a lot about it um, in in this part four article, especially about trying to figure out, especially with these all day manipulations, what the end goal is. Um, and you can never know for sure, but uh, as he mentions, it depends on time frame. It depends on, it depends on price action, and uh, it often means going for a high day clear out. But sometimes it could mean massive dump and uh, you know fade for the rest of the day. So, so yeah, uh, if we just go here in the morning, just because something pushes in a pre market, falls back down and sets traps, doesn't mean that. They're going for a high day clear out, right? And it doesn't mean just because something clears out high a day, which is here, and pulls back lower, that the stock is dead, right? Um, there's certain signals, especially in the candles and the volume, that, that kind of give you an idea of of is this stock truly dead? Is this an actual high day clear out? Should I be shorting this? Um, and other situations where it's more like, oh, um, this isn't ideal at all. Either I shouldn't short this, or if I do short this, I should have very tight risk. I should use small size. And if I don't see what I want to see in five, six minutes, I'm getting out, right? Uh, so it's kind of one of those situations where, OK, um, pretty decent sized volume, especially for this price point. You kind of have to adjust your mindset for the, like, you're not getting 2 million, 3 million, 4 million candles because the price is so high, um, usually. Uh, but yeah, pushes. Does this very kind of weird and organic choppy fade and then kind of gives a big dump. And I think I remember possibly shorting this right here. Because maybe I was like, oh, maybe they're just holding up the bids into this consolidation. And then they pull the rug on a huge, huge volume and like, oh, oh cool. There's like a nice little fade. And there was. It actually faded from, even if you got in here at like 12.1, it actually faded all the way down to 10 at the bottom of this candle. So, um, not bad, but once I see um, kind of this like find support on the five minute nine, AKA the one minute 50, uh, very common support, especially on, on, on pre-market pushes that kind of push like kind of late. It's kind of pushed at like nine in the morning. So like once the five minute nine catches up, which is this purple line, a lot of times it's gonna act as support. As you see, it just catches it and acts as support the entire way. Um, so because I know that MA is heavily used um, after pre-market pushes, once it catches up, um, once I see the support here and see the support here, um, you just want to get out and wait to see what happens. I'm like, okay, cool. It's, it's going towards high day, right? Then it pushes towards high day, but it, it breaks it with like the same volume that it was pushing over here. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. Usually you want to see a bit like like this candle right here, which is not that big at all. Um, usually you want to see this break high day with massive, massive volume, and then either have a huge rejection or do the micro shell for at least like like eight or 10 minutes, like have it just consolidate up here for like a decent long time. But instead you get like this weird candle that doesn't push with big volume and then it falls back down and then it gets re-soaked and reclaimed. I'm like, okay, this is like, 
not what I wanted to see. Um, and if you guys saw my Twitter, you'll see that uh, this month I had an 80% winning percentage on my trades. And a lot of that comes from um, just waiting for those like ideal moments, right? Uh, really waiting for like those ideal signals, kind of like the last two charts I just showed you of like, okay, I have a lot more confidence um, in these big cracks and in, in these big clear out candles and these types of trades rather than like this weird kind of lowish volume like bullshit. <laughs> and I think the LPN was also an NF an NFT name. Um, it was also like a sector hype name. Um, I think what happened here was TKAT was pushing on NFT hype. And then DLPN was like, I'm going to put out my own NFT PR and I'm going to like, <laughs> I'm going to jump on this hype train and pump my stock. And uh, so, like I said, I, I always pay attention to news. I always pay attention to sector. Um, I always pay attention to where the company's located. China, China stocks are heavily manipulated. Um, stuff like that. Always pay attention to float, obviously. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot of factors, but the fact that this is an NFT pump article with very weird, choppy, manipulated action, even down here, especially once you got this big dump and then it reclaimed and started doing choppy, choppy stuff. I know like, okay, this is whenever I see a super bearish pattern, right? And it doesn't produce a big fade and you start getting like early morning accumulation. That's already one flag in my head. I'm like, okay, first big dump didn't work. They could be going for a second manipulation pattern. Uh, but I need to see something very specific, like, like this is quite strong. Going from bearish dump to big massive accumulation, I always say like, the stronger a stock is, um, the more confirmation I need, right? Uh, and and this is quite strong. Flipping bearish pattern to bullish with massive amount of accumulation, and then weird price action, weird price action, breaking high day with very weird price action. I'm like, uh, like a. Uh, I don't like this, and I didn't short this at all. I just didn't, even with this kind of like little micro shelf, little push right here, cracks below the support. A lot of people like shorting into this. A lot of people like shorting into this. And even if you did, let's say you took, um, let's say you recognize that it's, maybe it's not super ideal, but maybe it's gonna fade, and you um, take a small position, right? Because it's not, I'll show you some insanely ideal scenarios of where you can go big size, but this isn't one of them. Um, so it's like, okay, like I said, we don't, we, especially if it comes below the, the one minute nine, I don't like to see a bounce back above it. Or if there's, I like to see this, like there's no bounce above it. There's a few wicks and it's rejecting. And then it gives this like big push, falls all the way down to VWAP. And then all of that gets re-soaked. And whenever I see like big support, especially after like a micro shelf and crack like this, get re-soaked and go back into the range, I just get out. I just completely get out like this is <laughs> this is not what you want to see even if your risk is say like the top of this like where this candle opened or it's halfway above this which may, maybe it's at 14.6 like i'm just like i'm not even waiting for that like i'm just getting out it's not what i like to see um and i can't tell you how many times i've got out for break even or like a one percent winner or one percent loser that ended up just doing this shit like that ended up just squeezing ten percent <laughs> and um yeah, if you have the ability to flip long and take all your profits at the, the clear out out here, that's great. Um, I'm trying to practice to do that in, in certain situations, but uh, at least I save money on my short. And then you get the same thing here. You, you kind of get this grind up. It breaks high a day, but then this crack isn't really that big. Again, when I see like, A, it's not that big in terms of the length of the red candle. If this red candle closed all the way down here, that'd be great. But it only closed, it closed above the one minute nine. Okay, don't like that. It had this soak. I don't like that. It broke the one nine and re-soaked. Don't like that. The volume on that red candle is nowhere near as big as the one that started pushing it. Don't like that. To me, like, like red candles that are this size, that are like the same size or smaller than what generated the push, um, and that only crack a little bit, to me, this is just like a natural sell-off, right? Some guy is just doing a very, especially once you get this grindy, slow grindy action, with no clear sign, especially given how strong this is, no clear sign that um, this guy is done with the stock and is distributing. Um, like slow grindy action, even with low volume, even with lower highs is so trappy, is so trappy. He could be trapping here and bring it up. He could be trapping here and bring it up. 
Um, and maybe you get lucky. Maybe you short on this bounce and like, maybe you're scalping. Maybe you're just going from here to here and that's all you want. That's cool. Um, and maybe you get lucky. It's like, I'm going to, I'm going to wait for the VWAP crack and inside out him. And that's cool. Like if you're just going for these, these moves, that's fine. Um, if this fits some pattern that you like, that's fine. Uh, but I'm looking to get in on the major signs of, of distribution. And the only thing I'm seeing here is nonstop manip. So I remember just like I had shares and I just, I didn't use any of them. I don't think I used, um, I think this was a trait. This was an example of, <laughs> I accidentally pressed my hotkey. Um, I believe it was, where was that? Um, here. I pressed my full size hockey here and I didn't know that I pressed it. And then I looked at my level two. Um, and by the way, I didn't know I pressed it here, by the way, I had no idea. I was like, dude, did I press it down here or down here? Like, <laughs> I had no idea. But then I looked at my level two and I saw that, um, I saw that, uh, I was short full size and I'm like, Oh no. I was like, where, where am I short? Um, no idea. And, uh, I looked at my open portfolio and it turns out I was short on this green candle, like the top of this green candle. And I noticed it on this red candle. So I actually covered on this wick and I made like 60 cents on full size, <laughs> which was pretty funny. Uh, but I got really lucky and I had to uh, make a mental note of when I am not trading a stock um, and nothing has happened. I need to kind of push. I have a special keyboard that I use for, um, my hockeys and I kind of need to push that away and make sure um, my trading window isn't selected and I don't accidentally make that mistake again because that could have really uh, um, fucked me up. But yeah, uh, so then you have more high day clear outs and you got the same, you got this like, here you got this like a big green candle on the highest volume of the day, but then you got like this little micro shelf and then you got this crack, but these cracks really aren't that big. Like, not only are they not that big, I know the 1 min 20 is common support. You get the same, like, huge wick, instant absorb, absorbing, absorbing, cracks it, absorbing. Like, like, I hate this. I hate this stuff. Like, uh, it, this isn't like, you know, ideally, I would want it to see it consolidate here, again, for 8, 10 minutes break the highs and huge rug pull. Not like a couple of minutes, it pours, pulls back on some smallish volume. You get some insane soaking. Like I hate all this stuff, <laughs> which is why like, um, I wasn't shorting any of this. I wasn't shorting except for my accidental short here. Um, and then you start getting to the point where it's like, we're in the middle of the day and I start thinking like, okay, this guy is setting so many high day clear out traps with no clear signs that he's dumping a massive amount of shares. And anytime it reaches support, instant soak. Breaks VWAP, instant soak. Breaks the 1 minute 200, instant soak, right? Look at this 1 minute 200 minip. Like, again, 1 minute 200, middle of the day, classic, classic MA for, for a minute, just like VWAP, just, it's a classic MA that they like to use for further manipulation, right? Um, and then it just acts as support the rest of the day, right? Um, and yeah, you just have, you just have like, uh, this is probably the closest we got <laughs> to like a more ideal short. It kind of pushed. It did micro shelf for longer than five minutes, which is great. I would love to see this push and then fall back, but we got the pullback. And then you got like some zero bounce decreasing volume fade. I'm like, oh, there's some soaking going down here, but maybe it's going to keep fading. And then you get the classic trap where it breaks support by two cents and then instant soak on big volume it starts pushing back up i'm like okay never mind <laughs> if you short it down here as soon as i see this green candle i'm like i'm out i'm just completely out um uh you see these all the time break support instant soak starts pushing back up break support instant soak starts pushing back up break support instant soak starts pushing back up um just especially at the big micro shelf dump candles not what you want to see, on low volume not what you want to see so um if anything, this is a signal that like they're going for another high D clear out and you go long here and you just risk the bottom of this candle. Um, that type of thing. But let's let's try to find some like crazy super ideal situations. Like stuff you really like to see, right? This is a good example of a stock actually not clearing out high a day, which is over here. 
but it did clear out the highs of a range. And a lot of times, this pattern can even work, um, even if it doesn't clear out high. It, it could come relatively close, you know, usually within like two or three percent, and still work perfectly fine. So we get a big two million volume push. Um, once I see big volume reach like two million shares per minute, um, especially after again early morning shows weakness on low volume. Some guy is soaking, some guy is soaking, some guy is soaking. He lets it break by two cents, pulls it back up and squeezes. I'm like, okay, it's it's already manipulated. <laughs> Classic break support by two cents, instant low volume reclaim, push it back up. Um, and now we're getting two two million shares a minute. And I'm like, I don't I don't care about this wick. I don't care about this crack. I'm not shorting any of this. <laughs> I was like, I was because in my mind, I know um, uh, once you start getting this volume and once you start getting this type of manipulation, um, they love to the trap a low VWAP. They love, and again, this is a huge, huge red flag. They bring up a low VWAP, volume starts disappearing, right? It was trading 2 million, now it's trading 300,000 shares, right? Huge decrease, like 80% decrease. <laughs> And then what do you get? Two lowish volume green candles. Like, guys, if the seller is really in control, this should give, like, the weakest green candle bounces. Instantly hit resistance, usually along one of these MAs, like the 1 minute 9 or the 1 minute 20. Um, struggle for, like, three, four minutes, and then just roll over and, and, and keep cracking. What do we get? We get a relatively low volume VWAP reclaim. And I'm like, oh, if you're in here, be short of this or this. Um, this is instant invalid. This isn't, so many people think, oh, this is a lower high you can short. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Again, a, a lot of, a lot of decisions of like, is this a, is this just a lower high balance on weak volume that I can short? Or is this a trap? And a lot of it depends on the action that came before it. What was the action that came before this? This crap, this low volume, bid soaking, break it by one cent, bring it back up on no volume trap. Okay, uh, some guy's manipulating it. Some guy's soaking a bunch of shares. And then this, like the classic, like once you start breaking like 2 million shares a minute, it's it, early in the morning, it's so classic to bring it below VWAP, decrease the volume and trap people. And as soon as you see a reclaim on, on even relatively low volume, like this is, this is 400K, that's 900K, you know, this that's still half of what it traded back here. I'm like, okay, I'm out. Like, this this the, these signals over here and this volume over here just gives me an idea that this is just manipulated and this isn't some, you know, this isn't some oh short to lower high balance on decreasing volume. Like this is this is not one of those situations. Um, so I'm kind of waiting for something that's like because there's so much manip here and there's so much manip here again. The stronger something is. I want to see insane confirmation. I don't just want to short the first big red candle, right? Um, and I know high day is here, so I'm like, oh, it'd be really cool if they target high day. I would love to see this break high day and then give a big dump, right? So we, we get something that's pretty close right here. And then this pulls back. And again, I hate seeing pullbacks that are like the red candle is still lower than the candle that pushed it up to begin with. To me, this is just natural selling. This is the manipulator just unloading some of his position to trap more shorts so we can keep squeezing them later, right? Um, not the type of dump, especially after all the minute that happened over here, especially I know that he might be targeting high day. I'm like, okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna keep waiting. And unsurprisingly, you get the big dump in instant green candles. I'm like, okay, um, hopefully he's going for high day. Brings it back up, does the same thing. I'm like, well, still not at high day. And I, I'm still not seeing any um, significant enough candles to like really, like maybe if this red candle right here, decent volume, if this was like 3 million and cracked all the way below VWAP, yeah, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to short that. <laughs> it didn't do that though. It just, it just kind of came back down and re-soaked and started slow grinding down. And then you get the big green candle again. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to keep waiting for high day. But then I noticed there's like this range forming, these these this range on where these wicks are. I'm like, hmm, okay, well, you got a top, a, a top of a, a very consistent top of this range. That could be a target, or it could be high day. Let me just watch. So then I'm watching the level two, I'm watching the tape. In Trade the Matrix article, he talks about this. 
you see the tape start to speed up, right? Like he talks about the speed of the tape. Great concept, great concept. By the way, I highly recommend recording. Um, recording your level two, recording your tape, and recording your chart every day. I do it. I have, I have, I have videos, nine-hour-long videos of all the market action of what I'm looking at going back months and months and months and months and months. Um, and then on the weekends or, you know, after the market's closed, uh, you can... Um, Go back and review it. Review it at very specific moments, right? And these these are the moments you want to review it at, right? At these wicks, at these pushes, at this accumulation, and also on the big crazy candle, right? So it goes back to the top of this range, breaks the top of the range at 4.1. Doesn't make it the high day, but I know it doesn't need to make it a high day because what happens is it breaks the range. And then instantly, biggest, this is... This is why this candle's not great. See this? Like, yeah, it's decent volume, it's red. Doesn't matter. Didn't clear the top of a range, didn't come down far enough. What did this do? Clear the top, at least the top of this range, and I know it doesn't need to clear high day. It's nice if it does. Um, but at least clears the top of this range, and then dump all the weight below the app on the biggest volume candle of the day. And the thing is you have to realize about this is it's so bearish. That if 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 this is going to produce a big fade, there's going to be no bounce, which means you have to short at the market. You have to short in the weakness. Th these the most ideal high day clearouts are shorting in the weakness. You are market ordering. You are slamming the bid. You are market ordering. You you are just going in. Okay. Um, there's no. I'm going to place a limit order. I'm going to wait for a bounce. Like there's none of that shit. Okay. This is in the most ideal situations. You are just pressing your at the market hotkeys, um, and you are getting in, and you are getting in big size, and you're getting in really fast when you see candles like this. <laughs> when you see it breaks the entire entire range, breaks below VWAP, insane dump candle. Like this is th these are the moments, right? And of course, you get no bounce. <laughs> and um, but it does just go to show. Uh, my ultimate price target, especially on stocks that push in the pre-market, um, is always the 5 minute 200. Because the 200 EMA, again, it's just, it's just so used. Uh, it's, it's so heavily used by um, of, of manipulators, and it's, it's super common support. Again, you could track the 5 minute 200 EMA over, over 1,000, 2,000 charts. I have it on all my charts, and I have thousands and thousands and thousands of charts saved. Um, you could see it. You could see what context it's using it's very important to understand that like with vwap and moving images it's all dependent on the context right for example if this popped if this stock popped in the after hours the day before the five minute 200 actually as a final price target on deep fades is actually a bad price target because the um after hours action from the day before raises prematurely raises the five minute 200 well above what it needs to be to be the ultimate price target based on the liquidity that, that, that gets traded um, during your short setup, right? Um, so it's kind of a combination of when does the stock pop, how much liquidity gets traded, what's the volume, what's the fade look like, how much volume is being traded on the fade. Um, even things like what's the float, what's the dilution, there's actually there's a ton of variables that actually go into the usefulness of something like, say, the five minute 200 as an ultimate price target. Um, and a lot of that just requires an insane amount of studying, just really an insane amount of studying uh, and really diving deep into each of those rabbit holes and like reverse engineering every single variable. So you have like a decent enough idea to form like a reasonable expectation of, of, of whether that's uh, useful or not. Um, and that's, that's where the skill comes in, right? That's where the hours of hard work come in um, when it comes to day trading. But yeah, as you see here, it was honestly a really good target. Traded good liquidity, had that big clear out event. Volume faded. They went for one backside clear out right here. Really no hope of getting any higher, usually on average, um, especially with the amount of liquidity being traded here. And then yeah, just fade, bounce perfectly off it. And this would have been an ultimate price target, right? And you could get out completely here and then you could look like a genius <laughs> for getting out, uh, you know, bottom cover before this um, 
a late day manip happens. And yeah, you always want to be highly aware of if something starts grinding up, like, okay, maybe, maybe you don't know about the ultimate price target and you want to keep trading this. Like, okay, maybe they're going for a clear out. They're clearing out this range. Now it's going to come back and fade. But then they clear this out again. Like, oh, maybe I'll short into this. And then it comes back, and then now you have to start thinking, like, oh, well, like, this volume is very low, but it keeps getting manipulated higher and higher. We're getting towards the end of the day. Volume starts picking up. Like, um, you have to change your expectations of just because there's this crazy bearish pattern early in the morning um, doesn't mean it, it's going to keep giving a few pops and keep fading. Um, eventually, you have to recognize when... Uh, the fade's over. And uh, what are some signs that, like, maybe this is just being further manipulated? Maybe they're just going for a higher close? Like, you don't know. You really don't know. So um, let's look at another interesting situation. So this is ideal. I want to point out something that's, like, crazy, 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 crazy ideal. Um, show another one really fast. OPGN. Um, I won't go too deep into this chart. What's crazy about this, this is actually a great, like, uh, long trap here. Because um, the odds, after they bring it down, again, my bid prop strat, it'd be nicer if this went even lower before they started doing this grind up. But um, this is actually a great short over here. But it, it just gets invalidated on the... Um, on this grind up back here, which sometimes it happens, but I don't want to focus too hard on that. I do just want to focus on high day, 3.96, which is right near four, right? Whole dollar, very important. High day, very important. Tons of stops at both areas. They manipulate this all day. I remember looking at it. I'm like, oh man, I really, 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 really hope they clear both 3.96 and four, and then they pull the rug super crazy hard. And then what do we get? It starts pushing. And now my, my finger's over the hockey buttons. So I'm like, okay, come on, let's go. Let's see what happens. Um, rejects four, pulls back, breaks it, big volume, pulls back a little bit. And I'm like, oh, I kind of want to see like a bigger crack. Zero bounce, huge 4.6 million. Not only was there 4. million shares getting trapped here, then another 4. million. Biggest volume candle of the day, just clear 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 dump and again like you can't wait for bounces i just you short at the market full size that's what i do <laughs> i know trade kind of talks about um you know taking like half your position and try to wait for a few bounces over here to, to build the rest of your position to get higher rr um and in many situations i think that's the right thing to do uh but in like the crazy ideal crazy like perfectly cleared high day and four perfect dump close you you Especially on the dump candle, you like to see it close near the low of that candle, right? You don't want to see a big wick down here, then instant soak like all the way back up here. You want to see a dump that reaches somewhat near the bottom of, of this one minute candle. Um, then when I see something like this ideal, I just go full size right away. Like I just I just market order, you know, all my shares, and I just <laughs> like right into here, like right at like three point. Uh, if you could get it earlier. Um, Sometimes you can anticipate this happening and you can have some level in your mind of like, okay, if this breaks like 3.73, um, maybe I can market order before it reaches the bottom. And sometimes you can, but sometimes it happens so fast that um, I try to see if I could get it closer to one minute nine because the one minute nine, which is this purple line, is such strong resistance on huge dump candles. Um, but really, I, I, I don't wait too long. If, if, if this is down to 3.6, once it gets to like 3.65, I just start shorting. Um, I just short, start shorting all my shares. I just keep doing it until I get my full position. And uh, and yeah, and a lot, like in the best shorts don't get bounces. And then this is exactly what you want to see. Because I go so big right away, I don't care too much about, oh man, I didn't get like a 3.65 bounce up here to add into... Um, some people love that stuff. Uh, preferably, I like, like if it's ideal, I like to go really big right away, and I like to just see it fade. <laughs> I like to see it go straight down, and uh, uh, you know, make a lot of money that way. Okay, kind of last example is something that's less ideal. 
uh, which is uh, Wafu. So you get this like crazy choppy, and Wafu was manipulated not that long ago too on this day. Um, very dangerous to think. So many short sellers have this very simplistic view that, oh, hey, this traded 89 million shares at $20. There must be insane resistance. Therefore, um, if it pops a few days later, I could just start shorting because there's so much resistance from the day before. Um, and a manipulator is using that exact psychology to just trap tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of shorts. Because, you know, like these overly simplistic views about resistance and how it works. Like, oh, this is a bounce short. There's resistance from not that long ago. And therefore, it's very recent. It's very high volume. And uh, that means there's uh, it's an easy short. So I can start shorting into here. And I can start shorting into here. And yeah, um, that's just how shorts get wrecked. They have just an overly simplistic view of, of the market um, and how resistance works. And usually they're... It's taught by a lot of chat rooms who don't understand manipulation, don't understand how to read it, um, don't understand how to trade it. Um, it's often it's often chat rooms that like just tell people, uh, oh, the stock is crowded or it's manipulated. It's untradeable. They love saying that untradeable. <laughs> What's funny about chat rooms uh, and gurus is you know they make tons of money off these people who buy their DVDs and, and sign up for their monthly chat rooms, which could be hundreds or thousands of dollars a month, right? Um, so they are financially, they have a financial, financial incentive that make it seem like they have all the answers, right? So, uh, and a lot of times this is all subconscious. They, they don't even, they're not even aware that they're doing this. Um, but they, they want to make it seem like they have the answers, right? And, and, and the people who are, who are giving them thousands of dollars, uh, for their DVDs and chat rooms and stuff want to believe them. They like, Hey, I'm giving you all this money. That means I've made the conscious decision, um, you know, that you're a smart person and uh, I believe in you. And if you are who I don't think you are, that makes me look bad. You know, it's cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is I view myself as a, as a smart person who makes good decisions. Um, and that means if I'm giving you a lot of money, that must mean I think it's a very, very, very good decision to do so. Um, and any evidence that contradicts that um, clashes with my worldview about myself. Right, <laughs> so these 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 chat room followers and these Twitter followers want us so desperately to believe all the all these things these guys are saying, um, and of course these guys these chat room guys again they have that financial incentive to make it seem like they know all the answers, um, and also uh, subconsciously, you know they have, they have all these people praising them, telling them they're amazing. They have, all these people want to get access to them, like um, all these people, and they, and they it's, it essentially inflates their ego, right? Um, and they start to have this, this view of themselves that like they're, they're much better than they think they are. <laughs> um, and so you, you, everything starts compounding, right? Everything, it's, it starts insanely compounding. Uh, and it becomes this very weird kind of um, just like, uh, like, like false reality of like <laughs> what's actually happening around them. And it, it just actually makes them insanely close-minded, um, both the guru, them, the guys who run these chat rooms and the people who follow them. So... Um, uh, so yeah, getting back to this, <laughs> just to let you know why, um, one of the many million reasons why anyone who sells a chat room or sells a DVD is, is, um, at best mediocre, uh, maybe 1% are mediocre, um, and then 99% are, are awful. <laughs> um, and many people actually don't, don't fully believe that, like, you can be a pretty mediocre day trader, uh, and you can still make millions of dollars. You can make millions of dollars with, a you know, 60%, one, one percentage and a profit factor of 1.2. As long as your profit factor is over one and you're not getting eaten up by fees, uh, you can just keep scaling that over a long enough term and, and make money. <laughs> like, not that hard. Uh, not that hard at all. Um, so uh, just keep that in mind when, when you're looking at these guys. Uh, the best information is always free. Trading Matrix's blog is free. My YouTube videos are free. My Twitter's free. All Day Faders' Twitter's free. Best people are free. Always remember that. Um, so here's a high day clear out where, again, kind of crazy, super manipulated. And I'm like, okay, I kind of want to see a big and nasty clear out. This is, again, my rule. There's so much strength. The stronger something is, the more confirmation I want to see, right? Um, 
So I think I was just kind of watching this, and it kind of goes up 15, again, whole dollar. Uh, the reason, by the way, the reason half dollar and whole dollar work so well, again, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that it's because enough people use it. <laughs> the reason VWAP works is because enough people use it. The reason one minute 200 works is because enough people use it. The reason whole dollar works is because enough people use it. They use it as support, they use it as resistance, um, they use it to place your stops. Um, which is why when you get you get this grind up to 15, you get this huge break of 15, huge volume. Does it break high a day, but it doesn't exactly need to. I think it came 15.38. Oh, broke it by one cent. <laughs> so broke high day by one cent, which is, I, I love to see high day get broken. I love to see 15 get broken. But here's the thing. I really wanted to see this candle come really far down. Like, like again, like I, I MMP, I, like I just showed you, like the most ideal situation is that it comes really far down really fast. I'm like, okay, maybe let's look at this candle. Um, gives a little push. And it does come really far down. I'm like, oh, cool, dude. Like, if this closes down here, that'd be amazing. However, I was looking at it, and then I see something I hate, hate, hate to see. Huge, huge, huge soak. And sometimes these could keep fading. Um, especially when the volume decreases and you don't get an instant, you know, those two green candle, low volume green candles back into the range, right? If that happened, it's invalidated. But you could, you could take... This isn't as ideal as I want it to be, so you could take smaller size. But then you, I kind of see the action you want to see, right? Is like no bounce, decreasing volume, trending down, gives a weak bounce, hits the 1 minute 20, big crack. I'm like, cool, big crack. Crack this, crack this, big crack right here. But then you see the most bullish signal of them all. <laughs> what happens after a gigantic big crack? What's the worst thing that can happen? Two low volume green candles that instant reclaim the entire crack under a key support level. And at this point, I'm like, fade's over. <laughs> like, I know people like to like, well, I'll just risk halfway up this candle. I know Trade likes to do that and totally respect him. Respect him more than probably respect anybody. But it, these are one of those signals that, uh, um, I personally just think it is, is, is too trappy, it's too bullish, and um, I'm fine. I'm fine with potentially, in these situations, um, giving up a huge fade because I'm seeing something I don't like. And that's fine. Like, I don't mind. There's times I miss big fades uh, because I'm reading the situation wrong. And I, I do try to go back at the end of the day um, over my execution charts, over the, the naked chart, over the level two, and I try to... Uh, look at the different variables that are involved and and I try to decide did I make a mistake or um, did I read the situation or is it just sometimes you know 80 90 percent of the time that this happens it keeps pushing but 10 percent of times it doesn't this was that 10 percent you're like I don't know I don't know I have to I have to make that um, that judgment uh, but I don't mind I don't mind getting out if I if I shorted say over here over here like 14.3. I'm getting out at, let's just say 14 right here. I'll take the 30 cents and I'm fine. And maybe I probably took some profits on this little crack here in case this happens. Um, so maybe I get out for like at 13.9 average and I made 40 cents and I'm like, okay, fine. Fine, if I miss a fade, it's fine. Like, um, but I just know a decent amount of time, just like especially once it starts grinding back up. Like <laughs> once it starts forming higher lows after these like low volume reclaims and higher lows, in soaking higher lows, soaking higher levels. <laughs> like, like um, if you didn't get out here, you should be getting out here. Uh, this is not a re-add for your short. I know some people love that. I'm going to add on pops. This is this action, not not what you want to see in terms of re-adding on pops. Like, re-add on this pop. You know, here, <laughs> don't re-add on 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 big support crack and then instant low volume reclaim. Um, not when you want to add. Um, and then it did like the bid props, so grind up action, cleared out high a day, and um, and they kept pushing it, which is abnormal. But hey, man, manipulators do a bunch of different stuff. Always changing up their tactics, very asymmetrical. Uh, I know this fellow trade made a lot of comments on this. Go check out his comments on Wafu. This was kind of a repeat of VTSI. Because um, a lot of manipulators like to repeat the same tricks like two or three times in a row, and then they change them up. Um, I do remember actually shorting this crack. 
right here. But then I, 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 I totally piked and I like, I got out instantly, <laughs> like down here. <laughs> I thought this was just going to keep being manipulated, but, uh, it was one of those situations I should have recognized that like, this was just a further final manip before the big pull. Um, yeah, and I got like, yeah, like what, like 50 cents or whatever out of it, but whatever. Um, try to, just try to learn from it, uh, try to recognize it in the future. But yeah, this was just a situation of, I don't like to see these bit. this didn't go down far enough, even though the volume was nice. Um, I hated that this cracked further and got re-soaked. The lower highs and no bounce was nice. This big crack was nice. And then the invalidation from the, the, the two green candles back in the range on no volume. Um, and sometimes that happens, man. You never know. You never know. Uh, it's very dangerous just to short this full size and just like, okay, I'm going to take my first profits down uh, all the way down here and ex expect this gigantic fade. Um, on like really heavily manipulated stocks where I don't see what I want to see, like if I don't see that big red candle that closes all the way down here, um, I will take profits faster. Uh, I'll, I'll take profits on big cracks like this. Um, and I will get out faster just because, and again, that's another thing, like, like in this context of this massive soak, um, right here and this manipulation that came before it, these candles are even stronger in my mind, right? Um, because of all the action again, like you have to judge these candles in the context of everything that came before it. Uh, and it just helps you build that thesis and uh, helps you make better decisions, at least in my opinion. Uh, so anyways, uh, hopefully I covered a lot of different examples. Uh, some really ideal, some less ideal. Um, oh, one super quick thing just to show you, uh, what day was this? The 18th. So JFIN, Super grindy, slow grind, manipulated crap. Don't short any of this. <laughs> Again, what do you, perfect. Huge push, pull back. Especially when something gets really overextended like this. These are the moments I'm waiting for. I'm, I mean, I'm looking at the chart all over here, but once it starts getting really, you start getting these really overextended candles, I'm like, oh man, maybe the big clear out's coming. Let's see what happens. Um, and yeah, you get it. Look at that. Breaks this by like two cents. This was right at 13.5, so half dollar and high a day. Huge rug pull. Um, the thing about huge rug pulls that get halted towards the downside, um, big halts uh, after a major clear out, the one minute nine, which as you see, this was, this was pushing on a one minute nine going up, the one minute nine becomes insane resistance, insane resistance. Um, so I think what I actually did is I actually took like, a, a starter here or actually no i think i actually went full size right at like 11.5 because i thought maybe it would get zero bounce and keep fading by new the the, uh, the one minute nine is um really the best entry uh what i should have done is i should have just went like half size down here and then add it in case it bounced because i know one minute nine is just going to push this down so 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 hard um but this is a good example i'll cover this in a later video of like kind of when you need to change your mindset of this is a big clear out candle or ejected the one minute nine and now it's in fade mode. Gives a little um, VWAP trap, goes for those $11 stop losses, micro shelves like Trade Dimensions talks about, and then fades, right? And usually it does this and it just fades, 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 fades. But at a certain point, um, you have to switch your mindset and a lot of it depends on these candles down here. These candles down here can give you like, look at these, Break support, soak, break support, soak, break support, soak. This nasty, nasty <laughs> thing. <laughs> the, the, these two candles were amazing to watch. Um, yeah, on the level two, it's just amazing stuff. But I'll cover in a different video. But eventually, you have to ch you have to learn how to change your mindset from deep fade, where you can short pops, and oh, this is crazy, super manipulated. Uh, I can't trust any further short from here on out. And in fact, I'm going to be looking for support reclaims to go long on and hopefully target like high a day or target some type of, of lower high level that they're going for. Um, and yeah, that's why you get these, like you get these huge cracks, goes down a little bit, huge reclaim pushes like just so trappy, but we can cover it in a different video. I, just, I did just want to cover how the one minute nine is really strong here um, and how this is the type of candle you like to see.
right? So, okay, hope that helps. Um, read all of Trade the Matrix's um, articles. He has four uh, rigged small cap articles you can read, read all of them, and uh, take notes. Study really hard, collect a, a massive amount of charts, record your level two. Um, learn how to read the action that comes before it. Learn how to read like what, okay, if a, if a stock's really strong, what do I really wanna see? Um, the stronger something is, the more confirmation you, you, you want. Um, what are some false signals? Uh, you know, kind of like break support by a few cents and instant reclaims. Um, stuff like that. Just, just keep studying. Keep all that stuff in mind. Um, there's a lot to learn. It's not easy. <laughs> um, it took me a long time to learn how to short these. Uh, um, especially these manipulations in the middle of the day with these insane clear outs. Uh, March was by far my best month. Um, you know, had a, had a great winning percentage, had a, had a good profit factor. Uh, and uh, yeah, that just comes from putting in a lot of effort, a lot of effort um, and continued effort, just continue over and over and over again. Um, so anyways, hope that helps. See ya.